After 17 years of driving, my old car finally bit the dust. So I bought a shiny new car, a Mazda 3. As you can see, it's a pretty nice looking car. But there was one big problem, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Let's go inside and look at the infotainment system. It's front and center, right in front of the shifting console. There's a nice big screen at the center of the dash. And while it might seem counterintuitive to put the controls down by the shifter, once you've used them, it's a beautiful innovation. But for someone like me, there's a major piece of equipment missing. There's no CD player. I've been collecting music all my life. First with 8-tracks, then hundreds of albums, cassettes, and hundreds of CDs. And I've always been able to take that music mobile. Mazda no longer offers CD players in its Mazda 3s, except if you get the top-end model with the premium package. But they're not alone. Other car makers are expected to be doing the same. So what does Mazda offer for input from external music sources? It turns out to be a pair of USB ports. So that means using one of these, or perhaps one of these. The quantity and quality of music you listen to will dictate your choice, as will the file types that are supported. Mazda supports MP3s, a lossy format, and WAV, a lossless format. Lossy translates to smaller files, but also loss of quality. Unfortunately, Mazda does not support FLAC files, a lossless format whose size is somewhere between that of the wave and that of the MP3s. I can't understand why they wouldn't support FLAC. It would simply be adding another driver to their onboard computer. Maybe something for a future firmware update. I have a lot of music to rip. And I don't want to waste all that time creating lower quality MP3s. And I don't want that music distributed over multiple flash drives that would be inconvenient to manage it would end up costing a lot more than a hard drive. Now, there are a lot of things to consider if you go the hard drive route. First, will a hard drive even work? It turns out it will. Next, and most importantly, is the operating environment. The cold in the winter, the bumps from potholes, and some hard drives need two USB connections, one for the music and one for powering, something that you don't want when your car only has two ports. I would have liked to have gone with a solid state because there's no moving parts, but they're just so bloody expensive, and I'd like lots of extra room for future music. In the end, I went with a military-grade regular hard drive. Being military-grade, it was supposed to be resistant to environmental factors like vibration and cold. It was cheap, and if it didn't work, I could always use it for my regular computer files. There are any number of hard drives that one could choose. My own choice was the Silicon Power Armor A80. It has plenty of storage space, one terabyte, and fast transfer speeds with USB 3. It's military grade, being shock proof and water resistant. It's relatively compact, about the size of your hand. It comes with two heavy gauge cables. I like that both ends have standard USB connectors. I've used some devices with the USB connector shown on the right, and I have found that connector to be less sturdy. Finally, the following excerpt from a YouTube video sold me on the product. A car lift plus a two-ton vehicle and a portable hard drive would normally mean disaster. So we decided to crush the 80 under minivan. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, ready? At this point, we thought there would be no hope after that. But hey, we figured we've already gone this far. What else can we pull off before heading back to the office? Not to mention we were getting a little bit hungry. Guess it was time for a little bit of barbecue. Yep, nothing like a little A to hit the spot. Let's just watch it. Let's just watch it fry. So we grilled it on some high heat just to see if we could. Oh, this is good. This is a bad idea. 
Are you serious right now? <laughs> After lunch, we thought it might be nice to go for a dip. Frame crushed, grilled to perfection, and dripping profusely, we had completely given up on the aid. But instead of heading back to the office, we figured that this hard drive deserved a little bit more abuse. Hey, there you go. why not throw it down a huge flight of concrete stairs? Off the side panel there. Second try, the actual hard drive popped out of the enclosure. The very first thing you have to do before you do anything else is get the disk format correct. The drive must be formatted as FAT32. That's the same format that flash drives use. If you use Windows NTFS, it won't work in the car. Next, come up with a scheme for how to organize your music. I've used a hierarchical scheme that will help me find the music when I'm driving. From the root directory, I have directories running from A to Z. Then below that, I organize by artist, and finally by album. I'm now going to step through the process of ripping CD to WAV file. There are a number of tools you can use to do this. You may have your own favorites. I'll show you some of the ones that I use. We'll start by preparing the directories in which the new sound files will go. I start by ripping the CD with a shareware product called FUBAR2000. This product can be found on the internet. When ripping is done, you can check the log to make sure there's no major errors. I'm running from the shadow of my former shadow's life. Sometimes I wonder if I... When all the files are ripped, I exit FUBAR2000 and highlight the files through Windows of File Explorer. I then right click on the files and open up another product, MP3 Tag. This is another product you can find and download from the internet for free. Contrary to what the name might suggest, it isn't just limited to MP3 files. It can be used for other audio file types like the WAV files we've just ripped. It's used to edit the metadata attached to the file. I normally just use it to add album covers, but you can also use it to edit the track label and the artist name. MP3 tag has a limited number of sources that it uses to look for album art. Another free product I sometimes use is Album Art Downloader. Finally, if that doesn't work, you can always look for the image in the internet or just scan it off your CD. Occasionally, if I have a CD that's in less than ideal shape, I use a product called Exact Audio Copy to rip it. It takes longer to copy the CD, and it doesn't always work but sometimes it can salvage a bad track. Another really useful product is Audacity. I have several CDs with hidden tracks. You have to wait through several minutes of dead space before the track plays. With Audacity, I can cut out the dead space and save the hidden track as a new file. In this instance, the hard drive is even better than the original CD because you no longer have to wait to hear the hidden track. We're going to revisit exact audio copy once more. Occasionally you'll have CDs where one song blends into the other. But when you rip it, a space is added, and there's an awkward gap. 
Exact Audio Copy has a feature where those spaces are reduced. A product you may wish to consider using is Drive Sort. When you record to a FAT32 drive, the files are placed on the drive in the order that you record them. That can also mean that they'll play back in the same order. It can be a problem if you want your music to play back in the same order that you organize your directory structure. Alphabetically, then by band, then by album, and finally by track number. If you run into that problem, DriveSort may be able to help you out. As we've seen, the Silicon Power comes with a small cable built in right into the side of the hard drive case and a much longer cable. Um, first we'll try the short cable, but I think you'll find that it's uh, not a very good solution. Okay, I'm going to try and plug the short cable in. Okay, we can't get it that way. Let's see if I have to flip it. Okay, I have to flip it, which means the hard drive has to go in like so. So, if you don't mind that tight turn in the wire and our drive coming right up to the gear shift console. You might be okay with that. Uh, it doesn't work for me though. Alright, for the next option we'll try the longer cable. Now that gives you plenty of flexibility. The, you don't have to worry about possibly getting a short from having the cable bent so so closely and if you'd like well, you can shove everything up here. Um, it's also nice to just pull it in and tuck it away into the the coffee cup holders. Now the third option, what I have uh, settled on, is I went onto eBay and found a USB cable, uh, USB 3 cable um, with the right connectors about 8 or 10 inches long and I find this one fits just perfectly. It only costs a few dollars and it's uh, well worth it. And I can even hide it so that it's not obvious. If you want to leave it in the car while you're out shopping or what have you, stuff something in behind there and hide it and uh, you're off to the races. You may be asking yourself, how well does the hard drive hold up under actual driving conditions? I've been using it now for nine months and it's performed well. As you can see, we do get winter here and I haven't had any problems in the cold. The cold is also responsible for potholes and bumpy roads. We'll be doing a test on that in a moment. What we're gonna test now is how well the hard drive reacts to bumps and jolts and vibrations while driving. We're gonna do two uh, runs of a uh, section of road with uh, some cracks and what have you in there. Uh, let you listen to the road noise without any music playing. And we're going to go over the same sec 
section of road again. Uh, this time put a uh, hard drive on and music playing and see if uh, the record or the uh, playback head jumps uh, when we hit the bumps. I've got a laptop and if you tap the table while you're doing work it'll make the uh, read head skip and you have to reboot the, the laptop. We'll see how well this portable uh, military grade hard drive does. So let's start driving. Should be able to hear some of the road noise as we're hitting the bumps in the pavement. That's enough of the, the first test without the music playing. We'll come back and do this segment of road once again. Okay, we're back at the start of our, our test uh, segment, test strip strip. And this time I'm going to put some music on and let you hear whether or not the uh, hard drive skips when we hit some bumps. Uh, I'm going to play some acoustic music to, so it's a little bit more clear whether or not um, any skipping goes on. So let's start the music and then start our test. We've come to the end of our test strip and I think you'll have noticed that there was no skipping from the hard drive uh, when we were hitting those bumps along the way. That's the end of this test. Another problem with the Mazda system is it uses the Grace Note database. Uh, Grace out is fine 
if your music collection is uh, top 40 or very popular albums, but if you have any kind of independent music, good luck with the uh, Grace Note uh, identifying your music. And just to show you the kind of thing that happens, I've got uh, a couple of CDs here that uh, I've put onto my hard drive by an English folk trio called Hank Dogs. You can see there are two women and a man in the group. Two women and a man. Now let's turn on the uh, infotainment and see who they think, who it identifies the artist as. I'm going to drill down through the directory system that I set up for my music. We'll go to the USB port. And starting from the top, I have a music directory. I've organized all my music alphabetically. I'll go into H where I've got the Hank Dogs and let's pull up the Hank Dogs and who have we got there? Some guy, some black dude by the name of Hank Jones, some old guy now, he doesn't look anything like these, these blonde women. And if you listen to this music... That doesn't sound like uh, what I would imagine Hank Jones. catch the voices in a moment. Hank Jones, right? I don't think so. Okay, so that's Grace Note for you. I don't want to belabor the point too much, but this Hank Jones thing's got my curiosity up. So I went and found out what its music is like. It's jazz, not bad, but not the same. If you're having trouble with the Grace Note database matching up with your music, one of the first things you could try is to download an updated copy of it. I don't have much faith in that, but we'll download it anyhow because we need it for the next approach. You can get it from the Mazda website at the link shown. You enter the year, model, and trim package to be directed to the right file. The problem is they don't update the files very often. The last one was over a year ago. What you'll end up doing is downloading the file locally, then placing it on a flash drive that you'll take to your car. 
the file is about 270 megabytes, so it might take a bit of time. As I mentioned, I don't think this will work, but I found a video on YouTube that shows another approach. Basically, you disable the database and force the system to get the information right from your own files through its metadata tags. So apparently I'm not the only one that's having the problem where the Connect system isn't sorting the music properly on a USB drive. Uh, you can especially see this where when you go into the genre, it's got all sorts of stuff that shouldn't be here. I don't have any jazz in my collection. I don't know what Roots or Urban is, but they shouldn't be there. A lot of my collection is metal, and there isn't even a section here for metal. So what's going on is it's pulling this information from Gracenote, and it's not even looking at the MP3 tags. So to get it to do what it's supposed to be doing, you have to disable the Gracenote database. And to be able to do that, what you have to do is try to install the Gracenote and then interrupt the process when you're doing that. So what you want to do is, is go into your settings. I'm going to stop the video now, but I do suggest you find it on YouTube and watch it on your own. Instead, through a series of still images, I'm going to walk through step by step how to disable Gracenote. Begin by downloading the Gracenote database from Mazda and copying it to a flash drive. Next, place it in one of the USB ports located under the dashboard. These are one of the ones that connect to the car computer. Now press the start button twice to turn on the car electronics, but leave the engine off. From the infotainment center, select the settings option. Navigate to the system tab and select the music database update option. Press the search button to initiate the search for the Gracenote database on your USB stick. Depending on how many database files you have on your USB stick, you'll be presented with a list of items to choose from. I've chosen the last one, but I don't really think it matters because you're gonna end up disabling the one in your car's computer anyhow. Make a selection and press Music Update. You'll then be prompted to proceed. Press Install. Music updating will begin, and while you're told not to restart the car while this is happening, you're going to end up doing exactly that. When the progress bar gets to the halfway point, wait a few seconds, then press the stop button twice. This will kill the job. And disable the database. Once the car is stopped, remove the flash drive and wait a couple of minutes. Then restart the car. You should be greeted by a screen that tells you that the database update was unsuccessful and will not be available. It is now disabled. We now have to test to see if this fixes the problem that we saw with the database before. We'll reconnect the hard drive to see if the system now gets its music information from the song file metadata. We'll check the song that Gracenote so badly identified. Okay, we're back in the car. I've got the hard drive plugged in. And we're going to find out what disabling the Grace Note database has done. Let's go back to the Hank Dogs albums that uh, were causing the problems before to see if they're being properly identified now. Okay, we can see now that uh, they are being identified as Hank Dogs, uh, not as Hank Jones as before. And let's... Pick a song here just to make sure. I 
sure enough. One thing you'll notice that's missing though with these wave files are the album covers. Now, my experience with the Grace Note was half the time the album covers were wrong or they only showed the artist, not the actual album covers. I also want to do a test with uh, different file formats uh, besides WAVE just to see uh, what would happen when you disable the database. So I'm just going to go to another artist here where I've loaded up a, uh, a WAVE, a FLAC file, an MP3, and an OGG and OG, OG format. So we just work our way down. Okay. Now you see here there is a that's the wave at the top MP3 AUG and FLAC which isn't supported normally. I'll get to that in a moment. So let's start with the, uh, the WAV file. As you see with the WAV, the artist is identified properly but there's no album cover. So I'm going to go back up and uh, we'll try with the MP3. Now, MP3, if you're willing to deal with a, loss, a lossy format, does in fact show the album cover. And let's try the AUG. AUG format is basically like the WAVE. In one respect, it doesn't show you the album cover. Uh, but it's also a lossy format. Apparently it's better than MP3. Um, but still no album cover. Now the, the problem here with the wave wave files is that uh, is with the metadata tags. Album covers aren't standard um, tags within the, uh, the wave metadata. Um, a couple of the tools that I use to add album covers to the files. Um, like MP3 tag or FUBAR 2000, they actually do store the album cover in the file, but they put it in a non-standard place. So if your software, the software in the car doesn't recognize it, uh, it's just not going to show up. Um, now on a uh, on your Windows uh, laptop or PC. Uh, the way they get around that shortfall is is to copy the image into um, right into the folder a uh, a file called either folder.jpg or cover.jpg, uh, but that doesn't seem to work here. Uh, it's likely because the the uh, operating system in the car is not Windows based; it's probably uh, Linux based. Now the reason I've included the FLAC file, even though I can't play it, apparently there is a hack that you can do to your uh, um, onboard computer on your your car to recognize uh, FLAC files. Uh, apparently there's some issues with that that I've read that um, uh, it limits how many, how much uh, um, files that you can have of a FLAC format before something like uh, two uh, gigabytes or something like that. Um, that's not going to help when you've got hundreds of albums. 
Um, the other thing is that you're messing with your uh, your onboard computer software. Uh, if you're willing to hack your car, uh, well, go for it. Uh, I'm not there yet. Uh, I just wish Mazda would support Flack. And anyhow, that should be it for this test. After putting most of this video together, I recently came across this posting in a website. Someone who encountered the same problem I did with albums being in incorrectly identified and contacted Grace Note. Unfortunately, their response didn't seem to be very satisfactory. So it seems you can maybe try my fix or just leave things the way they are and live with it. At this point, I'm going to wrap up this video. I know it's been pretty long and I've hit several different topics. Hopefully there's something there that you might find useful.